So in this video, I'm going to talk about well-defined sets, subsets, universal sets, null set, and cardinality of sets. So first is what is a set? A set is any collection of objects. We call it elements or members of a set. So for example, we have set of numbers. So these are set of numbers 1, 10, 12, 19, 300, 450. So whatever you can put there in that set as long as it's numbers. Or set of fruits. So for example, apple, banana, orange, grapes, or whatever fruit that you're going to put in that set. And sets are named using capital letters. Now let's talk about describing a set. So there are two ways to describe a set. First is the rule method. So let's say, for example, we will uh, describe set A as set of counting numbers from 1 to 5. So that's what you call a rule method. You just describe the uh, how the set A elements looks like. So you have to be familiar with some of the terms like counting numbers. You have to know what they are counting numbers to know what are the elements of this set. While the second way of describing a set is rooster or listing method. So for that set A, we write it in this way as listing method. Literally, we are going to list the members or the elements of the set A, which are counting numbers from 1 to 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we have to enclose that inside the uh, braces for it to be uh, in listing or rooster method. So now let's move to, our, to one of our main topics, which is the well-defined set. So what is this it is a set that clearly indicates what is an element of the set and what is not so for example we have set of counting numbers so this is an example of a well-defined set because you will know what are the members or the elements within this set it's only the counting numbers one two three four five and so on now how does a non-well-defined set look like. So it's set of favorite numbers. So this is an example of a not well-defined set. So why is this not well-defined? It's because every person has different favorite numbers. So we will have uh, different sets of favorite numbers. So there is no fixed set of uh, elements in this kind of set that's why it's not well defined set it for a set to be well defined it must be the same set of elements in that set whoever is writing that set meaning it must be the same for all people for that set while for set of favorite numbers it's gotta be different set for every person because we don't have the same favorite numbers Now let's talk about subset. What is a subset? It is a set whose elements are all members of another set. So let's say we have a set A composed of the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the set B what is composed of elements 2, 3, and 4. So as you observe, the elements of set B are all can be found also in set A. So the subset is denoted with this symbol. It looks like a C with an underline at the bottom. And since all the elements in B are can be found in set A, then we can say that set B is a subset of set A. Now, if we remove the underline in that C in the symbol for subset, it's called a proper subset. We can also use that, but not at all times. 
because a set can be a subset by itself. So B is a subset of B, but it is not a proper subset. For, for it to be a proper subset, it must be different sets. Uh, it must be two different sets. Also, A is a subset of A. So any set can be a subset by itself. But the B subset A can be also written as B is a proper subset of A because they are not the same set and all the elements in B is in A. So it can be called B is a proper subset of A. So the symbol for that is just like a C, a, a bit longer C without the underline at the bottom. It's called a proper subset. Next is we are going to talk about universal set so a universal set contains all the elements present in all the sets given so for example we have sets uh, a which is composed of one two three four five elements set b contains the elements two three and four and we'll add set c contains one five ten eleven and set D that contains 9, 10, 12, 14, which are the four elements of the set D. Then we can name different universal sets for this given set, as long as the universal set contains all the elements of the sets A, B, C, and D. So let's say, for example, so we name uh, this universal set capital letter U so it's usually capital letter U for the universal set which is equal to so let's say it's set of counting numbers so the elements of set A, B, C, and D are can be found in the set of counting numbers because these are all counting numbers and um, we can write also the set of counting numbers as in, in listing method or rooster method as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. So those are counting numbers. We can also um, name the universal or describe the universal set with a set of whole numbers. So all those elements in the a uh, in the sets a b c and d are can be found also in the set of whole numbers so we can write also that in rooster method 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so it's just actually almost the same with the counting numbers except for 0 so even though 0 is not part of the sets a b c and d it's okay, the important thing is all the elements of these sets given are can be found in the universal set. Or it can be simply set of numbers because all the elements in the sets A, B, C, and D are all numbers. Or you can specify it as set of real numbers. Or you can just simply list all the elements in that universal set. So just like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 14, because the, the, big, the smallest number is 1, the biggest number is 14, and the elements. So that can be a universal set. You can just write uh, exactly the numbers, 1, 2, 14. So that's easier to think of as a universal set although it will take time to list all the numbers now let's move to null set so what is a null set it's a set with no element it is possible for a set to have no element so let's say for example set e so set e will have this it's just simply a brace and nothing inside that means it's a null set or you can write it this way it's like a, a zero with a 
diagonal or a slash that's that means it's a null set or an empty set but you cannot do it this way it's like a combination of the two because this is not anymore a null set or an empty set because it it's like a set that has one element which is the symbol for null set that's one element of that so do not do this because this is this doesn't mean null set if you're going to combine the two you can just choose either of the two next we are going to talk about cardinality of a set so it's the number of elements in the set it's actually the size of the set so for example we have these sets previously the a b c and d and we're going to determine the cardinality of each of the set so cardinality is written in this way it's n and then parenthesis inside is the the set which is a or you could write it this way it's like an absolute value and then there's the name of the set which is set a so it's the same it means cardinality of set a and the cardinality of the set a so since there are five elements one two three four and five so there are five of them that means the cardinality is five for set b so we will just use the the most common symbol for cardinality which is the n of the set so the cardinality of set b is three because there are two, three elements two three and four the cardinality of set c is since there are four elements so it's four as well as the cardinality of set d since there are four elements as well so the cardinality is four so again the cardinality also means the size of the set thanks for watching and i hope you have learned from this video please support my channel by pressing the subscribe button and write the math topics you want to learn in the comment section